And it's time now for perspective. Less than a year after Bolivia's indigenous left-wing president, Evo Morales, was forced to step down and flee to Mexico following a coup, his movement for Socialism Party is back in power after Luis Arce won a resounding victory in last weekend's presidential vote. How to explain the party's extraordinary comeback and what are the major challenges that now await Arce? Well, my guest today is Angus McNelly, researcher in Latin American politics at London's Queen Mary University. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on France 24. Now, this really was a landslide for Luis Arce and uh, his socialist party. He won an absolute majority. Not everyone was expecting that. What won this vote for him so decisively? Firstly, thank you for having me on. And it's a pleasure to be talking about Bolivia um, because the country's been through a really, really tough year. Um, and I think everybody collect collectively sighed uh, a big sigh of relief um, when the vote came in because um, last year's vote went off with such kind of violence um, and the country polarised around two competing narratives of there was a fraudulent elections or there was a coup d'etat. Um, and I think one of the kind of really important things to note about this vote is, is that almost 90% of the country came out and voted, uh, which is one of the highest turnouts ever. Um, and it seems to me like the country started to unify again um, around the, the mass political party. What one of the key aspects of kind of bringing this together is um, they don't really want to go back to what came before. And um, Arce's main opposition, Carlos Mesa, um, was the president before Evo Morales between 2003 and 2005. And there's a real sense that even though lots of people don't like Morales, they don't want to go back to what came before. Um, and so they see Arce as a safe hands with the economy, um, he was the finance minister under Evo Morales and someone who can really get the country out of the crisis that has started to envelop um, the country in, in recent years, particularly under the pandemic, which has seen kind of the economy collapse, the, the, the healthcare system collapse. And I think Bolivians have turned to Arce as a safe pair of hands, as someone who they can see who can bring the country together. So you'd say that Bolivian voters didn't necessarily see the party as being tainted uh, with, uh, with that uh, allegedly fraudulent vote um, that saw uh, Morales leave for Mexico? No. Um, and I think what's important is to note about uh, accusations of fraud is there were definite kind of irregularities in last year's elections, including two servers which are offline, which are supposedly counting the votes. And the organization of the American states kind of came in and said there had been electoral fraud. There is very little evidence that there was direct manipulation. Um, and I think the important thing to note is that Evo Morales from Argentina, yes, he was important in what the party did, but he was seen very much as like outside of Arce's campaign. Arce and his vice president candidate David Chukiwanka really worked hard to distance themselves um, from Morales and to say that the, the, the mass political party um, it had moved on since, since Morales had left and that if he came back, it would be his political project, which is slightly different from Morales. Now, Bolivia has now had almost a year of uh, Janine Agnes's interim right-wing government. How did that period go down with Bolivian voters? How divisive was her leadership? I think the important thing to, to recognize with Agnes is she came from nowhere, really. She, she's a senator from Beni, which is a department which is kind of very rural. Um, and she won around, her party won around 4% of the vote in last November's, last October's elections. So when she came to power, everyone was quite surprised. There wasn't really a clear constitutional route for her to come to power. And she made a couple of kind of fatal errors um, in her first month in power. I mean, her handling of protest in Senkata, which is in a city called El Alto, and uh, Sakaba, which is the coca growers like stronghold, left to scores of deaths. And I think people became kind of like saw the echoes of the most kind of like despised governments in Bolivian history, particularly that of uh, Santos de la Sala, who presided over the, the massacre in 2003. 
And that really kind of like lost her popularity. Um, and her handling of the pan pandemic was kind of pretty disastrous. She tried to shut down the, the country and over 60% of the country is dependent on informal activities to survive. Um, there was a massive scandal over the buying of ventilators, kind of her daughter was seen using the presidential jet to go to a party. So I can, I mean, there was all of these factors that led to her. She didn't start off being a very popular candidate and she wasn't able to consolidate her popularity whilst in power. And uh, now looking ahead, what do you think, aside from the pandemic, are going to be the biggest challenges facing Arce and his government? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, they have a big challenge economically. Um, Latin America as a region has been in economic crisis since 2014, when global commodity prices started to drop. Bolivia is still dependent on gas exports for most of its fiscal revenues. Um, that Those kind of gas exports have to go through two pipelines, which either go to Brazil or to Argentina. Um, so it's quite difficult to, um, even within gas, to sell the gas to different markets. Um, and so there is kind of very, there are very few options available to the government in terms of how do you manage the economy. Um, so I think that's kind of principally their first challenge. Um, I'll say as the former finance minister is kind of a good person to try and do this. Um, but you still have this kind of like dependence on global commodity prices, which remain, as we know, very, very, very volatile. Um, you also have an economy where most people work in informal activities. Um, job security is pretty low and there are an increasingly number of highly educated young people, but no kind of commensurate jobs to match. Um, and this was part of the discontent at the end of the Morales years, where you had particularly university students and young middle class people thinking that the, the Morales government had failed them because the kind of jobs that they've been promised by their degrees weren't kind of materialising. Okay, um, Angus and so I think McNally, kind of like I'm so the... sorry, we have run out of time. I'm so sorry to cut you off there. Uh, Angus and McNally, a researcher okay. in Latin American politics at London's Queen Mary University. Thank you very much for speaking to us here on France 24 today.